New Hope TV, your encounter with God. We want to learn something this morning from the life of Mary. Amen? So this morning we are going to look at the song of Mary. Many of us know about it. The song of Mary. Magnificat, 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 magnificat. Magnify the Lord, magnify the Lord, magnify the Lord, magnify the Lord. We are going to look at three things from the life of Mary that we can do this Christmas season so that God will lift up, so that his favor would rest on you, so that you would do great and mighty things. Amen. The first one, let's read this. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 53. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 53. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Oh, yes, Lord. Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 53. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your presence. Shebaba, hubaba, ribaba, hubaba. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Baba, she Baba, ho Baba, re Baba, ho Baba. The Lord. Oh, yes, indeed. And my spirit had rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he had regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty had done to me great things, and holy is his name. Yes, Lord. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He had showed strength with his arm. He had scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He had put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He had lifted the hungry with good things. And the rich he had sent empty away. Amen, amen. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Mary says in verse 46, My soul doth magnify the Lord. My soul does magnify the Lord. My soul does extol the Lord. My soul does glorify the Lord. My soul lifts him on high. My, I call him King of kings and Lord of lords. I call him mighty. I call him holy. My soul magnifies the Lord. Even as you and I this Sunday morning, evangel family, we magnified the Lord. We glorified the Lord. We called him holy. Why? Because we saw his hand move in our life uh, when we thought we couldn't do something, when we thought it was the end of the show, when we thought this is not going to work, uh, just at that moment, just at that moment, just at that moment, just at that moment, it fell into place. Uh, maybe you lost your job, maybe you had a you know pay cut, but still uh, God brought you through miraculously again and again and again and again. So this is the time you can magnify him. This is the time you can glorify him. This is the time you can can stand on the rooftop and shout that he is king of kings and lord of lords he is king of kings and lord of lords he is king of kings and lord of lords amen mary magnified him mary magnified him mary magnified him why did mary magnify him verse 47 why did mary magnify him she's saying and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. What happened? A miracle happened. What happened? A miracle happened when God became her Savior. It is written, when God became her Savior, a miracle happened. Anytime, anytime you get saved, anytime a person gets saved, Joy bells start ringing. Joy bells start ringing. Joy bells start ringing in your soul and in your spirit. Uh, Mary was rejoicing in God her Savior. Mary was rejoicing in God her Savior. Mary was rejoicing in God her Savior. Because what was Mary saved from? Just like you and me, just like you and me, just like you and me, Mary was saved from her sins. And that is why she is saying, I am rejoicing in God, my Savior. 
Out there you may hear different kinds of explanation about Mary, praise God. But the word of God clearly says that Mary needed a savior just like you and me. Mary needed a savior just like you and me. And when she found that savior, her spirit started rejoicing. Uh, the joy came into her heart and that's what it is all about. Uh, Mary needed a savior. Praise God. Mary's spirit man came alive and the song of Mary known as the Magnificat broke through, broke through, broke through. Praise the Lord. This morning, one of the things that we can learn from Mary is no matter what, you and I as Christians, we have the Holy Spirit within us. We have Father God within us. We have the Lord Jesus within us. God is saying this season, magnify me, magnify my name, lift my name on high, praise me, extol me, for I am King of kings and Lord of lords. That is what Mary did. That is what Mary did. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let's read verse 48, please. Mighty King, mighty King. Thank For you, For he Jesus. has been merciful. Sorry. He has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. And now on all generations will call me blessed. Amen. What is Mary saying? Mary was a 16-year-old teenager at that time. Amen. She's saying, I'm a handmaiden, servant. She considered herself as a servant. In her own eyes, she was not somebody big. She was not somebody big, but in her own eyes, she was humble. She saw herself as a handmaiden, a maiden. Why? Because she was very young. Why? Because the area where she was born was nothing to boast about. It was one of the corners of that place. It was not a port city. It was not on the Silk Route. It was not a financial capital of uh, that uh, location, but it was a small town. So she's saying, I'm a small, I'm a handmaiden. In all humility, I'm a handmaiden. I'm a handmaiden of the Lord. Humility and meekness was something which was there in Mary. And God is saying this morning that if that was there in Mary, then you and I, Evangel family, we need to work on being meek. We need to work on being humble. It just does not mean putting meekness and humility for outside to be shown, to be seen. We have seen people, we have met people who are more humble than humble can be, who are more meek than meek can be. They will do all kind of namaste, everything possible, but inside their heart, they'll be thinking, oh. This morning, God is saying, magnify me. Look at Mary. Look at the meekness that she had. Look at the humility that she had. What then happened? Because of that meekness, because of that meekness, it says, yeah, she was lifted on high by being chosen to bring forth the son of the living God. She was meek because she was weak, because she magnified the Lord, because she knew her God. She was lifted up to bring forth the son of the living God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Do you remember any other thing which is close to what we are studying this morning? It says here, Mary was humble, meek, but she was lifted on high to bring forth the Son of the living God. Does it connect somewhere in any other place? Maybe some place like in Matthew. Maybe some place like in Matthew chapter 5. Maybe some place like in Matthew chapter 5. The Beatitudes. What does it talk about? What does it talk about? What does it talk about? The meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Mary goes on to say, Mary goes on to say, For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. From henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Mary says, all generations shall call me blessed. But Jesus this morning, Jesus this morning, Mary said once, but Jesus this morning through the Beatitudes is telling every child in Evangel Assembly and those watching us, not one time that you'll be called blessed, not two times that you'll be called blessed, not three times that you'll be called blessed. How many times? Nine times in the Beatitudes. It says you shall be blessed if you have the character that is mentioned there. This morning, God is saying, not just being meek, that is not enough. My coming 
coming gets closer and closer and closer. I want to bless you. One characteristic is not enough. I want Evangel family to look at all the nine character which is there in Matthew chapter 5. If somebody could read Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 to 11. Uh, Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Continue magnifying your Lord. Continue being meek. But God is saying something more than that. Something more than that I desire from Evangel family. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is, is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall re revel you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad, glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted amen. they the prophets which were before you amen let's go back to the first blessed oh praise you king five three blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven praise you king praise you king praise you. what is god saying this morning god is saying yeah Meekness is one character, every blessing and the Beatitudes. You know, every one of this we can take one Sunday. But I'm just rushing through because we will do that study. Every one of this we can take one Sunday. But this morning God is saying, if you have the characteristic which is mentioned here, then my blessing comes down upon you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You may not be able to do all nine, but pick up one, two, three, something this Christmas season and watch the blessing of the Lord come into you because it is not my word. It is the word which is there, which is his word and his word will not fall to the ground without things coming to pass. So stand on that and listen what God has to say this Sunday morning. For it says blessed are the poor in spirit. What is that characteristic? Poor in spirit. It does not mean anything other than the fact that if you believe that you have to lean on God. Lean on God. Not on your flesh. Not on your flesh. Not on money. Not on looks. Not on connections. If you are this morning, if you want to know, if you want to have that blessing, God is saying the first characteristic, if you want, if you know how to lean on me, if you are poor in spirit, if your spirit has to lean on him, because without him, you know you can do nothing, 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 nothing. And if God is speaking to you this morning, it is with a reason. If I was in your shoes, I would sit up, I would listen, and I would know what to do next. If you are becoming uncomfortable in your home, watching me, listening to me in the church, then that means the Holy Spirit is touching you and it is with a reason because 2021, which is going to come, is nothing like 2020. God's coming gets closer and closer and closer and closer. God desires you to be cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner before He comes. Uh, praise God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who know how to lean upon God, not upon the flesh. Let's go to four. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Four, please. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. This can be interpreted in multiple ways, but how I look at it, if you are mournful for your sins, if you are mournful for the pro uh, problems that you had, if you are saying, God, I have fallen short, I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me, King of Kings, uh, repetitive sin, I'm so sorry, help me, lift me on high, then you shall be comforted by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and those who do not know the Lord, if they come to know the Lord, salvation comes in, salvation comes in, but if you're mournful for your sins and ask for forgiveness, you shall be comforted. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Five, five, please. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We saw Mary. She was meek. She was humble. She was meek. She was humble. More than anything, in her own eyes, in her own eyes, what happens? You may start being meek. You may start being humble. But as the mighty hand of God lifts you up, lifts you up, lifts you up, lifts you up, what happens? You forget being meek. You think it's because of you. You become... 
your ego becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And like Basil Lincoln used to say, the head will become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And suddenly one Sunday morning, you can't get into church. Why? Your head is so big and it is getting stuck at the door. Praise God. God says, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Learn how to lean on God. Learn how to lean on God. Learn how to lean on God. Not in the strength of your horses. Not in the strength of your chariots. Not in the strength of your horses. Not in the strength of your chariot. But on God and you shall inherit the earth. Mary did that and Mary brought forth the child which is called as the son of God and God exalted her on high. The same principle works today whether it is in your family, whether it is in your relative's place, whether it is in the place of work, if you are meek truly from your heart, God will lift you on high. That principle works every time. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you are hunger and thirst after righteousness, after God's presence, come into this house. Whenever his house is open, come into the house. Rush into the presence of God. Spend that one hour time praying. Spend that time instead of turning on the TV and watching some adventure movie. Turn on the worship music. Be in his presence. Be in his presence. Be in his presence. Be righteous like he is. And when that happens, what does it say? For they shall be filled, which simply means if you have a desire of something that needs to happen, you are getting stuck, you are getting stuck, you are getting stuck, but you have a desire, your soul has a desire. It says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled, your soul shall be filled. Amen. The righteous desire, the desire that you may have, if you are righteous and if you are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, after God's presence, after God's truth, after God's holiness, then your soul shall be filled, which means your soul will not be lean, which means the leanness come when you don't have things to eat, when there is no finances, when you are poor. It simply means the desires of your heart will be met. You will not be lean, but you will be made fat with the blessings of the kingdom of God. Let's go to the next one. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, especially this Christmas season. Especially this Christmas season. Especially this Christmas season. Mercy, forgiveness. You are at the wrong end. The man took two lakhs of your money and he ran away. You had given him that money to do a work. He ran away with it. This is the season where you forgive him completely. Forgive him completely. God sent Jesus to this earth so that your sins and my sins are washed away. This is the time you forgive him completely. Let God take care of him. Maybe that money will never come back. Maybe after five years with interest it will come back. But you have forgiven that person completely. God says, blessed are the merciful. What else? Forgiveness. What else? Giving. What else? The person who is sitting under the flyover, no food, but they lay, nothing. Take that shirt that you have, which is behind in your cupboard. Anyway, you're not wearing it for the last 10 years, but anytime your wife wants to throw it out, you will say, no, 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 I'm going to wear it one day. But you never wear it anyway. Take that shirt. Go for a walk. Go for a drive. That person who's sitting under the flyover, nothing to wear. Go. Put, on, put it on him. Put it on him and see what the Holy Spirit does in your life. Because when you are merciful, you shall obtain mercy. Amen. Season of giving. Uh, season of giving. Uh, season of forgiveness. Season of giving. Uh, praise the Lord. Let's go to the next. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. <coughs> Continue to bless, uh, press after righteousness. Can you read the next one, please? <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The wrath which God had against you was removed when Jesus Christ came to this earth. 
rose, went and died on the cross and rose again the third day. When that happened, when that blood was given for you and me, the wrath that was there from God the Father against us was removed. Therefore, we are at peace with God. If we are at peace with God, God is saying you and I have to be peacemakers. What does that mean? It simply means practically out on the street when you're driving your two-wheeler, when you're driving your four-wheeler, the guy cuts in front of you. Do not shout. Do not make a... Calm down, peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Relatives, two of them, they're giving you gyan after gyan, wisdom after wisdom. You can rise up and say, hey, hey, look, take a walk. Peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. You don't like your mom counseling you. Young people, old people like me also. Mom is saying something, do this, do this, do this, do this. Peace, 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 peacemaker. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because I get to meet few more people probably than some of us here. And the other day we have this guy who's heavily talented in the Kannada and the Tamil uh, ministry. I don't want to take names. Heavily talented, uh, uh, keyboard, that, this, everything, can sing, blah, 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 all that young fellow, right? The only problem is when his mom counsels him, when his mom counsels him, what does he do? He shouts back, okay, that's normal. He hits her. Well, how old? Uh, yeah, how old is he? Uh, maybe 10, 800, I think. 800, 900, I don't know how many. He hits her, and the mom comes crying to me, saying, this is what is happening. And then I counsel him, then I counsel him, then I counsel him, but it's far worse. Not only does he hit her, poor lady, the husband also hits her, amen? And the latest which I heard, the husband and son, both of them hit her together. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. If you have a habit of beating up your wife, maybe she's not yet your wife, your girlfriend. Maybe he's not yet your husband, but your boyfriend. If you have the habit of beating them up, God is saying, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Do not be, you know, astonished when the blessing is not coming into your life. You're not walking the way God wants you to walk. This season, God is saying, meekness is one character that Mary had, but my coming gets closer and closer and closer. Pick up all of these things. Blessed are the peacemakers. Become peacemakers. Blessed are the merciful. Go and put that shirt on somebody who's cold under the flyover. Blessed are the ones uh, who has thirst and hunger after righteousness. Spend some more time praying to me. Spend some more time putting that worship music instead of putting a jingle bells or something else. You can listen to that. I have no problem with that. All I am saying is spend some more time with God of gods and King of kings so that the blessing comes down into you and from there goes into the neighborhood. Let's go to the next one, please. Uh, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. This speaks of itself. And what's the last one? The next one. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Just stand up for what you believe is right. I've heard of many stories in schools, in colleges, where they don't like you because you're tongue-talking. You are a firebrand for God, and you would be the one who would, they would call you for prayer. But the rest of your companions, your colleagues, your teachers don't like it because you're somebody who's on fire for God. God is saying, blessed are ye when he shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you for my sake. They did that against Jesus. Jesus, when they do that against you, consider yourself blessed, says the Lord this morning in your friend circle. There comes Holy Joe. Let's keep our mouth shut. Otherwise, he's going to say something. Blessed are they. Blessed are you when they revile you. Blessed are they. Blessed are you, says the Lord. Amen. So these are the blessings. So number one, magnify the Lord. Number two, meekness. But more than meekness, pick up some of these characteristics. Because when you pick up these characteristics of meekness, of being uh, merciful, of uh, you know, going out and spending more time, the blessing attached to it come in. Amen? That's point number two. Verse 49. Verse 49. Verse 49. 149. For he that is mighty had done to me great things, and... 
and holy is his name. What are the great things that he did for Mary? What's the great thing that he did for Mary? The great thing that he did for Mary is that the angel Gabriel came into the room and said, blessed are ye among women, blessed are ye among women. And then what happened? The mighty Holy Spirit came upon her. And what happened? The Son of God came into her body so that after nine months, uh, he would come into the world. So Mary is saying, he has done mighty things for me. These are the mighty things that God did. The angel Gabriel appeared to her and said, blessed are ye among women. Blessed are ye among women. He is most, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Amen. I like this so much. I like this so much. Evangel family, those watching, pay attention here. And his mercy, and his mercy, and his mercy. You're stuck. You don't know how to go ahead. All sort of things. Where is the power of God? I can't see the power of God. I'm walking everything. The mercy of God is required. When does mercy come in? Mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. When King Jehoshaphat, when King Jehoshaphat at the age of 35 years became king, uh, suddenly what happened? The Amorites, all the Hittites, all of them started coming against this nation. Uh, and Jehoshaphat had a small army. What did he do? He said, Lord, Lord, with all the people, he went in front of the Lord. Lord, save us. And the Lord said, yes, I will save you. And what did he do? He sent the evangel choir in front of the army. The army did not go in front, but evangel choir went in front of the army. Stanley and Candy and Nikki and everybody in front of the army. And from the other side, the army is coming. The enemy army is coming. The enemy army is coming. And they are shouting. They are shouting. They are shouting. Blessed is he. They are shouting. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. And what does God do? What does God do? He puts ambush in front of those enemies. And what happens? The three armies which were coming against this nation, they hit each other. They hit each other. They hit each other. And by the time they reach there, all of them are dead, killing each other. And for three days, they could pick up the spoils. Three days, they could pick up the gold. Three days, they could pick up the weapons. Uh, his mercy, his mercy is on them that fear him. His mercy is on them that fear him, says the living God. Key to God's mercy. Key to God's mercy. You're stuck in your place. You don't have power to move. You are stuck. You can't go up. You can't go down. You are stuck. The key to God's mercy in whatever position, you are in a strong position, but you need the mercy of God. What is the key to God's mercy? Somebody watching needs this verse. The key to God's mercy is to fear God. Noah, Noah moved with the fear of God in Hebrews 11, 7 and build the ark. Noah moved with the fear of God and built the ark. What happened? His friends, his colleagues, his relatives made fun of him. Holy Joe gone crazy nuts. Building a big ark in between nothing. There's no water, no nothing. But moved with the fear of God. He built the ark anyway. Amen. Abraham, what did he do? He took his son to be sacrificed on top of Mount Moriah. And as he was raising up his knife to sacrifice, then the angel of the Lord appeared and said, Now I know that you fear God. Now I know that you fear God. Amen. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is what brings his mercy into your life and my life. And that is what is required if you want his blessings, if you want his power, if you want his strength to come into your life.